Live team coverage of this potentially historic storm continues tonight. We have reporters spread out across the viewing area. Let's begin with Kai Goldberg, who's tracking the latest conditions. Kai. Hello, Corrine. Hello, Rick. Well, two words that we're going to hear quite often over the next 48 hours, continuous and consistent. That's what we're dealing with with this atmospheric river event moving through Southern California at this hour and will once again continue to move through Southern California until at least Tuesday night and early Wednesday morning. Downtown Los Angeles up on the board for you, a live look at a very stormy LA basin and we are looking at the target zone being Los Angeles, Ventura, Santa Barbara County. That's where we're really seeing most of the heavier rainfall, especially through the Santa Monica mountain range. It will make our way through those particular counties. And here's the Santa Monica mountains and you can see Calabasas picking up some heavier rainfall, which continues all the way up the 118 just to the north of the Simi Valley. The Santa Clarita Valley will make our way to the west side between Brentwood all the way up and towards Westwood to Beverly Hills as well. And once again, those are the hot spots this evening where we're looking at a flash flood warning. It's going to hold steady until we get to midnight tonight. The surrounding communities, all of Southern California under a flood watch, which is going to take us until at least Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening. We'll make our way east and we'll travel primarily along the 210 as we head out towards Rancho Cucamonga, the Fontana areas. These communities, as you can see, they're foothill communities, and that's where we really see that strong and at times very heavy rainfall. And we'll take a closer look into the Orange County area, and you can see they're looking at showery conditions, but all of Orange County for the time being inundated with rainfall. There's just not an area in the OC that is not seeing rain, and we're looking at this energy continuing to make its way in an easterly direction. Here's a good look at Lake Elsinore. We'll make our way a little bit further to the northeast and look at Paris. They're just about to get hit with a, a very strong cell right there along the 215. As we travel a little bit further inland, we'll go up towards Beaumont, and they're just not seeing that heavier rainfall yet, and that includes the Moreno Valley, where we're still seeing some showery conditions, but the heavier rainfall begins to pick up once again, making our way into San Bernardino. We'll travel a little bit further to the west as we head through the Rancho Cucamonga communities. There's a look at San Dimas, Glendora. We'll make our way further west where we'll see showery conditions throughout the Duarte area. Here's a look at Pasadena and then up to the mountains we go. The Angeles Crest Highway as we take a look up towards about that 3,500 to 4,000 foot level. Cedar Springs, it's a little bit of a rain snow mix, but as we climb a little bit higher near the Wrightwood area, well, that's where we're looking at the snow levels that we're picking up measurable snowfall anywhere between about 6,500 to 7,000 feet. Again, we're looking forward to more snow as we continue to make our way through the remainder of the evening. And of course, over the next couple of days, we could see up to four feet of snow in our local mountains. And for the time being, since four o'clock this afternoon, take a look at these storm totals, these snow totals. They are quite impressive. Snow summit at about 7,200 feet, nine inches already. Snow Valley also 7,200 feet. They've picked up nine inches. Running Springs at 6,200 feet at three inches of snowfall thus far. And we'll go to Wrightwood at 5,900 feet, two inches. And we certainly once again have a lot more snow to fall here in Southern California and a great deal of rainfall that will continue to make things very dangerous for much of Southern California. Headed to work, getting the kids to school tomorrow treacherous conditions. We'll get into that. We'll talk about Tuesday, another very dangerous day. And finally, once we head into the end of the upcoming week, we'll start to see things drying out for Southern California, but it's going to take a long time. Rick Kareen, back to you. Yeah, kites just yeah. beginning. And with the heavy rain, flash flooding caught several motorists off guard as their cars became submerged tonight, trapping them in their vehicles. Now let's go right to John Fanilio. He's live in Tarzana. He's got the latest on some of those rescue efforts over there. John. Yeah, Kareen, Rick, the rain is still coming down here in the San Fernando Valley, starting to pick up right now as we speak. It has been a wild ride all day long. We have seen and experienced treacherous conditions. We've seen widespread flooding, toppled trees, and major crashes along our freeways. And we're not out of the woods just yet, as more rain is on the way. <laughs> First responders have their hands full as an intense and slow-moving storm wrecks havoc across Southern California. Well, you know, uh, oh, a heart-stopping scene as an SUV hydroplanes flips and crashes on Interstate 5 near 7th Street in Los Angeles. Just one of many chaotic moments across LA County following hours of rain. 
The saturated soil simply couldn't hold this tree in Valley Glen, sending it smashing into a parked car. Fortunately, no one was hurt. I just heard a, lo a really loud boom sound, and then I came out and I saw this tree. Um, yeah, it's, I usually park there, so it's really scary. In Tarzana, too much water to drive through, but some tried and stalled out. A similar scene in Westwood, where drivers took a chance on Mother Nature, only to become submerged. The LA River, usually a placid trickle, transformed into a roaring body of water. The National Weather Service issuing a flash flood warning for most of LA County, lasting until midnight Sunday, as much as four to eight inches of rain expected through Tuesday, much more in the mountains and foothills, as one of the largest storms in years churns over the Southland. Earlier today, Governor Newsom issuing emer an emergency declaration for eight counties across South, uh, California, including Los Angeles, Ventura, Orange, San Bernardino, and Riverside counties. We're going to have more coming up tonight at 11. For now, I'm sending it back to you guys in Hollywood. All right, John, we'll look forward to it. Thank you. Uh, the steady rain has brought down a retaining wall in La Habra, crushing uh, three parked cars nearby. This happened about 6.45 this evening in the neighborhood over near Lambert Road and Idaho Street. Now, initial reports say that officials now have been red tagging apartments that face the street. That's right where the wall collapsed. Thankfully, though, no, nobody got hurt. And this just in, all canyon roads leading to and from Malibu are experiencing rock and mudslides. Malibu Canyon Road is closed between Malibu Crest and Mulholland Highway. Earlier today, an evacuation order was issued for the area along Santa Maria Road. That's north of Topanga Canyon Boulevard. That evacuation is in effect now through Tuesday evening. And there are new evacuation warnings tonight, this time in Orange County. Silverado Canyon, Williams Canyon, and Tribuco Canyon are all under voluntary evacuation warnings because of the heavy rain. Officials say that residents are encouraged to prepare and should voluntarily evacuate, especially those with disabilities and those with large animals. Anyone who needs help evacuating can call the Orange County Sheriff's Department. And in Ventura County, mandatory evacuation orders are in effect for some areas there. They include the RV resort in the city of Ventura and in unincorporated Ojai. Officials are warning the public tonight about some dangerous flooding and debris flows that are expected to block roads in that region. Our Rachel Manitoff is live in Ventura with the latest on the watches and those warnings. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Kareen. Hi, Rick. Good evening to you both. We're in the Camp Chafee area, which is under an evacuation warning. This is a low-lying part of town. We're right next to Coyote Creek, which tends to overflow anytime we get continuous rain like this. And that's exactly what happened over here. This is Camp Chafee Road. You can see it's closed and it's completely flooded. One person told us that right in the center over here, there's about nine feet of water. Anyone, though, who wanted to evacuate was able to do so safely. And then there are some people who say they're used to this kind of weather. They're going to stay put and just wait the storm out. Heavy downpours leaving behind anywhere from three to six inches of rain and bringing with it the risk of flooding and mudslides like this one on State Route 33 between Matillaha Hot Springs Road and Lockwood Valley. A number of communities in Ventura County are on high alert given this strong storm. I have a backpack. Um, evacuating is something that's kind of become normal these days. Deanna Romero lives in Casita Springs up against a mountain that's prone to slides. When I drove by it earlier, um, there were a ton of rocks already on the road, so it's already starting to come down. So I am concerned about the mountain coming down. While this isn't recommended, surfers tried their luck cruising the waves of flooded streets and kayakers paddled their way through a makeshift river in a neighborhood not far from the coastline. It doesn't always get like this, so it's always fun to see it when it gets bad. 
flooding. The National Weather Service issued a flash flood warning for parts of Ventura County, including Ojai, Oxnard, and the city of Ventura, where this RV park was ordered to evacuate. So flash floods are always a concern because they can be dangerous for our roadways and communities and our hillsides, um, but just general safety for everyone. So if you don't have to be out, stay home, uh, keeps everybody safe. Residents in an unincorporated area of Ojai were also encouraged to leave for higher ground, whereas Foster Park, Camp Chaffee, and buildings on Grada and Trueno Avenues in Camarillo were under warnings. Scott Garby's main concern is water breaching his front door. He's planning to hunker down inside and doesn't think it'll be necessary to vacate. I've been through a half a dozen of those storms like this and uh, going to all that trouble and then having, you know, nothing really happen. I'm not, I guess maybe it just taking a little chance perhaps. Keep in mind, there is an emergency shelter open now at Ventura College on Telegraph Road. The Office of Emergency Services is asking people to monitor these changing conditions and prepare to evacuate, especially if you live in a flood prone area like this one. We're live in Ventura County tonight. I'm Rachel Menetoff. I'll send it back inside to both of you. Rachel, thank you so much for that. It may be a bit of a surprise, but the storm is not going to stop school. Tomorrow, the superintendent Alberto Carvalho says that the LAUSD will keep all schools open as usual, except Vinedale Elementary School. That's over in Sun Valley. But as we all know, that could change if the heavy rain and the flooding make it hard for the students and the teachers to get to class. Now, officials plan to keep a close eye on the storm. They say they're going to update the public on school closures over the next few days. Meanwhile, classes at Cal State Fullerton, Cal State Northridge, and Cal State Los Angeles will be only remote tomorrow. Employees at those universities are being encouraged now to work from home.